Good morning and welcome to the Digital Learning Lab. We're so excited, boys and girls, that you stopped uh, today to join us. My name is Stephen Stone and I am the EdTech Training Coordinator for the district. Um, we want to let you know this morning, today is going to be a very exciting event, learning about online safety. Online safety is very important because guess what? Everything that we're doing now is pretty much going online. So boys and girls, we're trying to keep you safe as you navigate through the different online resources. We have three amazing presenters today uh, that is going to be joining us, Shannon, Jamee, and Danielle. Are you guys ready? Yes, we are. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, everyone. OK, so uh, before we move on, we would like to let you know that the chat is disabled for uh, for this event today. But guess what? Um, in the description, there is a link there to a form where you can put in your questions to ask the presenters as they go through the online safety. So we're going to give you over to these fabulous presenters. And so you all have a great day of learning. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. We are going to have a great session today and it's called Digital Citizenship. We're gonna give you great tips on how to stay safe online. But before we begin that, we're gonna actually give you some tips while you're watching us today. So I know that you're online and that you're seeing the video so once you're online on the YouTube, you can see there's some options where you can play. And you can pause. So if you're watching us, you can pause and maybe you miss something. So you can take this little slider and you can move it where you want it to be so that you can watch us or rewatch us. Another cool thing you could do while you're on YouTube with us, you can click on the video, do a right click you do a right click again, and then you could do a picture in picture. And then down at the bottom, you could actually take your little cursor and move it up. And you could actually take the corners and expand it. So you can make it bigger as you watch this, because we do want you to kind of participate with us today. So when you click at the top, you can open up another browser and then you can follow along with us. So wherever you are and you want to follow along with us, you could do the picture in picture, okay? So that was really quick. And also I wanna show you that just like Mr. Stone said, sorry, I'm gonna click out of here. You can scroll down and you could actually see the bit.ly where you can ask the questions. So we wanna make sure that you know that that's available so you could ask questions. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Johnson. All right, so we're gonna get started. All right, what is digital citizenship? We're gonna let you watch this quick little movie. So hang in there. Do you have your sound on? Jamee, there's no sound. Okay, let me see what's going on. I know I- Unmute the sound on the video. Okay, it was on the video. Okay, sorry about that guys. That's okay. Let's see. Let's see if I can play. Okay, here we go. All right. There we go, guys. It's still no sound. I think you got to no? do the share computer sound. Have you, did yeah. you, on the share screen, you did that? Okay. All right. Well, 
Thank you for sharing that video with us. And I'm super excited to talk about dig digital citizenship today because we've been talking as we've been prepping this course, but there's a lot of um, kids nowadays, you guys are online and you're playing games and you might be posting on social media or you see your parents' social media or you might have an email. There's a lot of things that you do and you live in a world nowadays where that's everywhere. I don't want to age myself too much, but I remember when I was growing up, my kids always laugh when I say this, but I didn't have a phone that I could just like hold any time. I think I was in college when I got like a bag phone that was like for emergencies only. So this is like very serious nowadays that like you have computers and you have cell phones and you have tablets of different kinds. So digital citizenship is going to become increasingly important to you as you get older. Because as you can see, and we're going to show you today, there's a lot that goes into being a good digital citizenship. Absolutely. So okay. what are good digital citizens? I don't know. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah. We need to remember that when we're online, we need to share with care. So we need to be smart. You need to make sure not to fall for the fake. There's a lot of things out there that are untrue. So we're gonna talk about ways that you can make sure that you don't fall for fake. Yeah, and just like in real life, whenever you're keeping your information and your secrets private, you have to secure that information online as well. <clears throat> And remember, it is cool to be kind. So we're going to talk about being kind online. It's very important. And lastly, we're going to talk about something that seems pretty simple, but we're going to talk about when in doubt, make sure that you talk it out. And all of these things are going to tie into becoming a good digital citizen. So your digital footprint is going to follow you everywhere. So a digital footprint is anything that you do when you're online, whether that's posting something in a chat, um, posting a photo or emailing somebody, all of those things have a record. Okay, so your digital footprint is something that's starting even as soon as you start. When you're a baby or not a little bit older and you start getting on the computer, everything that you do is going to eventually follow you because it's recorded. So your digital footprint is something that's gonna stay with you all the way until you're graduating from high school and looking for a job or looking to go to college. It's gonna follow you the whole entire life. So make sure that your digital footprint is one that's positive. And, you know, I think of digital footprints too, like whenever you, if you step in mud and you have a muddy footprint, right, then it's dirty. And so think about if you are treating others in a way that is dirty or not nice or any of those things, then you're going to leave behind a muddy digital footprint. So it's so important. That's a really good analogy. Yeah, that is a good one. Because even so when you clean that shoe, it's sometimes still really hard to yes, get all the little hard particles to get out. All the dirt out of the crevices of your tennis shoe and everything. It's hard to get rid of it. So um, we're going to do a lot of sharing information with you today, but we want you to be able to interact with us too. So we have a template that we are, have created for each of you to open your own copy of. And then you'll be able to answer some of the questions that we're asking. And then we're gonna get into playing a game as well. So what you need to do is if you are currently watching us, obviously on YouTube, you're gonna need to go to a new tab and type this bit.ly in. So you will type in bit.ly slash uh, D I G C I T C F I S D, Dig Sit C F I S D. And when you do that, it's going to pop up and ask you to make a copy. So you're going to click the blue button to make a copy of the document. And it may take just a moment to load. And this is going to give you a copy of a template that will then be yours so you can edit it. And as we go through each of the sections today, you will have little challenges of what you'll be completing. So you'll see there to double click in the gray boxes to type. So we just talked about digital footprint. So my digital footprint is 
So once you get this open, you'll double click in that box and type yourself a little note as to what your digital footprint is. What is an example of something that we just shared with you? And as we go through, we'll, we're next gonna go into smart and alert and strong and kind and brave. And each time we go through those, we'll have a little activity for you to do in your template. So we hope that you're able to get that open and join along with us. And if you didn't get the bit.ly, we have it on each of the slides during the presentation today. And so Mr. Stone it'll be down also the put it. Corner. I'm sorry, oh, Ms. Kilpatrick. Perfect. Mr. Stone put it down below as well. Wonderful. In the so chat. it's also down below so you can just click on it there. You don't even need to type it. Thank you, Mr. Stone, for doing that. Perfect. Okay, let's start with SMART. This is a really important part you, um, when you're being on the internet and being digital, you need to be thoughtful and consider who you're sharing things with. You need to think about there are going to be some consequences as well. And we're going to talk a little bit about, you know, our sensitive information or information that we share with others. Okay. So the most important thing, of course, is being positive online, because even though that you're online, it does reflect how you are in real life, okay? So whatever photos that you're posting or comments or messages, they stick with you forever, okay? So once you post something, you need to think before you post. So um, think about the things that are you, you're posting and make sure that they're positive. And we're gonna go more in depth with it, but we want you to remember that whatever you post, you know, it sticks with you, kind of like that digital footprint, that muddy footprint Ms. Kilpatrick was talking about. It's almost like that permanent marker that you see, that you use and you really can't get it off either, even though you try. So let's think about being positive online. Another thing, when you think about being online, you know, you're yapping online. So we used a, an acronym so that you could remember these things when you're online. Sometimes things online and, and things offline are different, but if you're online, you shouldn't with the Y, remember this is an acronym and every letter is gonna represent something. So that's how I would remember it, so Yappy. So the Y is your full name. Don't give out your full name. So these are things you don't wanna share. And notice how, what the picture looks like. It's on a billboard, it's public. We don't want it to be public. So that's kind of another thing that you could think about. Do you want everybody in the world to know your full name? I wouldn't. How about the A, your address? You do not want to give away your home address or even your school address, okay? And your phone number. Don't give out your phone number. And the other P, don't give out your password. I know I haven't shared with Ms. Kilpatrick or Ms. Haynes my password. No, no. she hasn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's sensitive and that's for me. And then the Y is your plans. And what I mean about your plans are like, hey, I'm, I'm about to go to the swimming pool and you're saying it online to people you don't know. It's okay to say to your real friends, but I wouldn't put it on a chat that you're going swimming or wherever you're going. That's things that you wanna keep to yourself, okay? And along with the passwords, I just wanna mention that, you know, your parents and your guardian can help you with that as well. All right, so we wanna keep you guys safe out there. And that looks like the thing that you that we have on the template for them to fill in those different parts of Absolutely. Yappy. Absolutely. So then they would just simply go back to their copy and they would fill in what the Y is, what the A is, and the two P's and the Y. Pretty simple. So I wonder if we should give them just a couple seconds to do that. Absolutely. Okay, so you guys could go back to your, your copy that you made. And of course you might wanna make sure you rename it. At the top, mine says copy, but I would app actually put my name on it. Okay, so we'll give you a few minutes. Go back so, to that other slide so that they can see it, please. Yes, ma'am. That way they can fill it in because I oh, think it's gonna be perfect. really helpful for them <laughs> to um, be able to have that written down somewhere so that they can remember those things not to share. And that's something that's really hard. It's hard for me. Like I told Miss Gilpatrick and Miss Johnson, I was like, I need to remember some of these things that she's talking about because I feel like sometimes I find myself being guilty of some of those things. So it's definitely something you need to be thinking about when you're sharing things. And I have to like in the back of my head, I keep remembering like, oh, I probably shouldn't say that. I probably shouldn't tell that person that information. 
questions. So definitely think about everything that you share online and remember that you have no idea who could possibly see it. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. So we're going to go Ms. on. Johnson had a good point happy. too. Your parent, your, your parent or guardian is like you said, Ms. Johnson, that if you ever have a question about whether or not it's okay to share one of those things, your that's what your parent and uh, or guardian at home or, or trusted adult can help you to decide. All right. Beautiful. Okay, let's move on. We're going to move on to being alert. And hopefully you had a chance to copy Miss Johnson's YAPI acronym. <laughs> if you did not, remember, you can always stop and rewind so that you can fill it out or rewatch it after we're finished and complete that template. Okay, but today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about being alert. Okay, and what this means is not falling for fake. How to tell the difference between what's real and what's fake. Understanding what phishing is and how to report it and then stop the signs of a potential scam. Okay, so what is phishing? That's a really big word and it's spelled funny. Like when I think of phishing, I think of it starting with an F, like I'm gonna go onto a boat and I'm going to go fishing. Well, it's kind of similar. Okay, so phishing with the PH is a cyber crime, which means that it's done digitally through the use of some sort of computer or device. And it's when people can contact you, sometimes through email, sometimes through telephone or text message, and they're pretending to be somebody else. Okay, so it could be like somebody that you think you trust. It could be a company like, you know, maybe um, Amazon or Google or someone and you're like, oh, I know that company. I trust them. Okay, but you have to be really careful because if they start asking for too much private information, like Ms. Johnson just talked about, you need to remember that it's probably not safe. You have to be really careful. Mm -hmm. So when you think about phishing with the PH, I still want you to remember phishing with an F because it's kind of the same thing. Think about when you go fishing with a fish and you put your hook in the water and it has the bait on there. When the fish goes to get it, he's like, oh, I'm going to get a tasty treat. But then, uh oh, he's stuck on a hook. And the same oh. thing happens with fishing with the pH. It's like you think it's a great thing, but then all of a sudden something happens and it's not. Okay, so let's go a little bit more into detail about what this is. Ms. Haynes, okay? I was thinking, I was thinking about that last night because we were talking so much about it yesterday. And it made like I like how you said it's someone because that's the key thing is that it is, there is a, a person or a group of people that are behind that trick. Right. And so if you think about if this was in real life and someone came up to you and was like, Hey, take me to your house and show me this. Right. You wouldn't give that information. So always remembering that it's someone who is pretending. That's correct. Yeah. And a lot of times too, I'm glad you brought that up, but a lot of times too, they're, they're kind of playing on what they think you would want. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they're like, Oh, you know, I think that people would love to have money or they would like to have a free iPhone or something like that. So what, what I found and what I try to tell people is typically if it's too good to be true, it probably, it probably yeah. is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so like, look at this sample. This is just from a cell phone. Somebody got a pop up that said, Congratulations, Amazon user, you've won a $1,000 gift card or an iPhone or a Samsung. What? If I saw that, I know I'd be like, Ooh, Amazon, I could easily spend $1,000 on Amazon. I want this prize, right? And part of me is just going to want to click. What do you think, Ms. Gilpatrick, Ms. Johnson, wouldn't you want to click on that? Yes, I in fact, my to. daughter did like, click on something like that oh, once no. and she put in her debit card <gasps> information oh, and God. it was a scam and she ended up losing even more money than what she thought. Oh, that's she was, terrible. It, it was yeah, terrible. It's very enticing, but no. Yes, yes it's very enticing. It. But yes, think about that. Do you really think Amazon's just giving out thousand dollar gift cards out of the kindness of their heart? You know, they're a no. great company, but I don't think that's going to happen. So this is somebody like Ms. Gilpatrick said, that's trying to trick you. Okay. They're running a scam and they're phishing. They're trying to see like, can I get them to click on this link? Okay. So you probably feel like that little guy on the left side, like, woohoo, yes, I'm going to get a thousand dollars. But as soon as you start putting in your information and you hit that submit, you're going to feel like that girl on the right. 
you're going to be like, mm -hmm. oh man, and have instant remorse. Like, why did I do that? And then you worry. Like I do that a lot. I did it one time and I was like, oh man, what, what's going to happen? Have they, have they stolen my identity? Is something crazy happening? Are they going to like get all my money? You know? And it's like, you just have this kind of panic feeling. So avoid that. If you see a pop-up like that, what you need to do is just exit out. If you're online or if you're on a phone, you can just close that screen and, you know, get rid of it. But just even though it's so, so tempting, don't click on it. Okay. They're trying to trick you. And as soon as they ask you for any information, you know that it's going to kind of be a trick. So remember, if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Don't make yourself a victim. All right. Here's Great. one way that you can tell is if you go to a site, say that it links you out to something else. If you happen to click on that and you go to another site, this is one thing you can look for is up at the top in your address bar. If you see a little padlock at the beginning, okay, that means that it is a safe site. It is secure and it has been tested. Okay, so wherever you see this padlock, like here on our SciFair website, we have the padlock, it's safe and secure. Google, okay, it's safe and secure. Okay, you may see it in green, you may see it in gray, but as long as you see that padlock at the beginning, that's going to tell you that it is a safe site to search. A lot of times too, you'll see the HTTPS at the beginning, and again, that's just telling you that it is a safe place to search. All right, so let's play a little game. What would you do? I love watching this show on TV where they put these people in these situations just to see how they react. So let's do this together. And you'll notice that this is on your template as well. So you Ms. get a Ms. message Haynes, from- Ms. Yes. Haynes, I'm sorry to interrupt. That's but this, okay. I just wanted to mention, we had a question from Vincent. Oh. Um, and he asked about, how do you not let a hacker into your account when they sound different and ask, and I think this question kind of talks about that. So Vincent, yes. if you're watching, um, pay close attention here and this will help you with your question. Yeah. Yes, that is a super good question. And it is so true because that's exactly what they want you to think. They want you to think that it's somebody that is helping you or safe. I read one thing that said like they were playing a video game and somebody came on and said, hey, if you give me your phone number, I'll call you and give you a code that's going to get you through all the lands that you need to get through. And again, that sounds very like, oh, of course I want to do that. But you just need to remember that if it sounds too good to be true, it probably is. And that person could be somebody that you don't want to meet. Okay, so let's try this. If you get a message from somebody that you don't follow, let's say you were on social media or you were playing a video game and it says, hey, I love your posts. You're so funny. Can you give me your phone number and we can talk some more? Okay, so I want you to think about those three answer choices. So the purple box says, of course, I want more friends. I would give them my number. Okay, so if you think that's what you would choose, I want you to take that check from the side of the template and pull it onto the purple box. The blue box says, hmm, I'm curious because I like meeting new people, but I'm going to go and ask an adult, okay? And then the last one says, I would ignore it. That just makes me too nervous. So, Miss Gilpatrick, Miss Johnson, which one do you think you would do? I would hmm. probably ignore it because it makes me a little too nervous since I really don't know who's behind the other, you know, on the other side. I think that that's probably the best choice. The easiest thing to do is to ignore it. Ms. Gilpatrick, do you think you would do the same? I think I would eventually, especially, you know, with that thinking, stopping and thinking and remembering what we're talking about today. But sometimes it's tempting whenever somebody says, oh, you're so funny. And they, it, you know, it's a compliment and you think, oh, this person's nice. They want to get to know me more. And I, I, I like, you know, I want a new friend. <laughs> and so it's very tempting when you're in the moment to not remember yes. what, these things, yeah. but yes. um, it's better to be safe than to have exposed yourself and be sorry later. So that's correct. Yes. And I mean, the, the, the blue box sounds like, you know, it's still kind of a correct answer. There's actually kind of two correct answers here. Mm -hmm. As long mm -hmm. as you don't click on it and give them that information, you're either going to talk to an adult or you're going to totally ignore it. Both of those answers could be correct, but we're curious. What would you do? So make sure to move that check and I will show it to you very quickly. So right over here on the side, you have a check mark and you can just drag it onto whichever box you would choose. OK, 
Okay, and then be ready for this next part where I'm gonna talk about a couple little tips of what you can do to stay safe. Okay, so let me get back in the big screen. Sorry for one second. It's loading. All right, there we go. Okay, so if you do happen to fall for a scam, here's what you can do. So if you happen to click on something, you give out some information, make sure that you tell your parent, your teacher, or another trusted adult right away. Okay, the longer you wait, the worse it could get. So make sure that don't be embarrassed. It's okay. It has happened to all of us. I'm telling you, the stories I've heard in the past couple days of people talking about scams that they've fallen for, it happens all the time. Okay, so you can also change your password. And then if you do fall for one, let any friends know. Sometimes what it'll do is it'll go into your contact list and send a message to everybody on your contact list. Okay, so if you do happen to fall for a scam, make sure to let your friends know like, hey, it wasn't me. I didn't do this. Don't click on that. Even though it looks like it comes from me, it's not from me and save them the trouble of being hacked or spammed. Okay, and lastly, if you have the ability to report the message to block it, make sure you do that because we want to try to kind of stop these um, people from doing these things as quickly as possible so that nobody else falls for these scams. So make sure that you're doing all of those different things as you are um, being online and don't fall for the fake. All right. All right. Wonderful. Thank you, Ms. Haynes. Like you said, it is easy to, to fall for that sometimes because you wanna believe the best. And, but it's always good to just take a moment and check on things and check in with an adult before you make those choices. So we're gonna talk, you talked about, both of you actually talked about passwords, right? And how important it is to keep those things secure. So we're gonna talk about how to be internet strong by securing your secrets. So protecting your personal information, um, as well as how to create a unique, strong password. And the main tip is that your password should combine characters, numbers, and symbols. So we're gonna look at what that means. So securing your secrets is when you think about all of the information that defines you, especially things that may or may not be online, um, which information should you keep private and which information is okay to share. So it depends on the environment that you're in. Because if you're, for example, in your Google Classroom with your classmates and your teacher, and you're sharing with just those people about your how many siblings you have or how, how many pets you have, that's probably okay. But if you're in a public chat or um, if you are gaming, then those things should, should be kept to yourself. If you don't know who is possibly going to see that information, it's better to secure it. So we're gonna look at a few different things that you wanna think twice before you, before you share. Your contact information. Definitely take the time to um, think about the environment that you're in before you share. Your family's information. Your gender, male, female. All of this, especially when you're sharing it in combination. So if you say your name and that you're a female and that you're in second grade and that you're, and you say all these different things, then it, it gives a lot of your private information to um, people that you may not want to have that. So education in school, your birthday, um, your blog or different sites that you like, places that you've lived and your personal story. So all of these things are secrets that should be secure with just the people that you know and trust. And those people would be the people in your community, the people at your school, in your Google classroom or in your family. So definitely take the time to make sure that you talk first to a trusted adult before sharing that information. Okay, we're gonna talk about passwords. And I want you to think about what makes a strong password. So if you use a combination of letters, upper and lowercase, numbers and symbols, 
Ms. Haynes, do you think that that would make a strong password? I, I do think that would make a good password because it's harder to guess. You know, if you make something super simple, it might be easy for someone to guess. But if I have like random letters and numbers and symbols, I think it would be really hard for somebody to guess. You are correct. That is a good way to make a strong password. You want to have a combination of all three of those things. Um, using at least eight characters, Ms. Johnson, what do you think? Do you think having at least eight characters would make a strong password? I definitely think it would make a strong password because it's harder to figure out the longer the password is for somebody to kind of hack into it. So yes, the Absolutely. longer the better. Yes. The longer the better. And most password, most uh, um, companies that require you to set up an account or have a password are, have these things in place now where they, that you have to have a combination of letters, numbers, and symbols, and you have to have at least eight characters. And even in Cypher for our student passwords, those are the requirements that you have to meet whenever you set up your school password. So. Definitely, those are two ways to make strong passwords. What about using your personal information? It makes it so much easier to remember if I'm using like my birthday or, oh you know, my name as part of my password. Mm -hmm. Would that make it very strong? No. Probably not because people could probably guess. I talk about my kids and my dogs a lot. So I'm sure that people are probably thinking that's probably what part of our password is. So I try to be really careful to avoid that kind of thing because I think that people will probably guess it. Yes. Me too. And we're tempted to sometimes have use or create passwords that will be easy for us to remember. But we're going to give you some, I'm going to share with you a way to create a password that you can remember that doesn't use your personal information, or at least it doesn't seem like it's using your any information about you. So it's important to have a unique password for each account because using the same password again and again and again, and I think a lot of people are guilty of that one. If once that password is released, then people can access any account um, because you've used the same one. So trying to use a unique password for each important account account is a strong password. So Ms. Gilpatrick, do you know what happens in Chrome sometimes? If I have a password that I've used on multiple accounts and for some reason it was compromised, meaning that either there was um, something that got hacked into or something, Google actually tells me like, oh, this password you've used on this site has been compromised. So it tells me all the different places where I've used the same password. So now that you just said that, I feel like I need to go back and change quite a few of my passwords because that just opens that I was using that same one over and over again. So I have to go back and change to lots of different things. No, oh, that's very good. You're absolutely right. I am I need to do the same thing, actually. <laughs> so, um, so again, easy to guess, like your nickname, name of your school, or your favorite baseball team. Again, those are not, not things that will make a password strong because people are able to figure that information out. And then, what about sharing your password with people so to help you don't so you don't forget it? I'm not a good idea. I don't think no, so. It does not. Um, however, just like we've said before, your parent and guardian, it's okay to share that with them. Um, but as far as anyone else, keep that information mm -hmm. secure. Okay, so on your template, you have a question, which password is strongest? So you're going to click and drag the um, check mark to the password that you feel is strongest based on what we just talked about. So did you know that the most common passwords are the word password and the number one, two, three, four, five, six? Um, so those, in my opinion, would not be ones that you would want to use. So um, which password do you think is the strongest? I'd like to share with you this one right here. I read a tip about using a phrase, so like a sentence, okay? and. Um, but using the letters that begin the sentence. So on this one in the green, what, I, what this stands for is you are very smart, but I used a five instead of an S because it looks like an S. So that's a good little trick. 
you are very smart, period, Miss Gilpatrick, exclamation point. So Great. I remember I created that several days ago and I still remember what it is. And I just, so that is um, a one way to make a strong password. I so like on that your way. template, Me too. you will, oh, yep. You're going to choose which password you think is the strongest, click and drag that check mark on top of it. And then down below, I will protect my, and you're gonna double click in there. And what information do you need to be sure to protect? All right, thank you for all those great tips, Ms. Gilpatrick. I'm definitely gonna take some of those and work on my passwords. Same here. All right, moving right along. The next thing we're gonna talk about is being kind online. And it is cool to be kind. And we know that if we stick with positivity, we can definitely be positive online and kind online. And we're gonna talk a little bit about some inappropriate behavior and how we handle that and how to speak up, all right? So it is cool to be kind, but there are two types of people that are on, that could be face-to-face -face or that could be online. And you have two, you have a bystander and you have an upstander. A bystander is a person that um, uh, that just watches and will do nothing. So a bystander won't get involved and kind of will ignore things. But an upstander will kind of intervene and they will speak up against any behavior that's bad and they will help be kind while they're doing it. So let's think about, I know that you know what it's like to be kind in person. For example, this little guy is helping this little guy with his crutches. So that's being kind. So you know what that looks like in person, right? What about the second picture? This yeah. person's not being very kind. And you've probably seen that. So you know that if you were a bystander, we wouldn't want you to ignore it, but maybe you could be an ups upstander and kind of intervene and say, you know, that's not very kind. You shouldn't be pulling her hair, okay? So you can be kind when you, uh, when you become an upstander as well. And then the next one is this little girl is sharing. So that's being kind. So. Boys and girls, you know what it looks like to be kind in person, but let's talk about what it looks like to be kind online, all right? Remember that you're behind the screen and you think nobody can see you, but remember people can. We've been talking about this, that every comment, every picture, every message, that's representing you, that's your reputation. So if you're putting out positive things and they're going, oh my gosh, Ms. Patrick, Ms. Ames, they're always saying nice things, they always uplift my spirit. So we can see the words, but we may not really get to see you, the person behind the screen. So think about being a bystander on the internet. You see a, a, a bad post come in and, and it's talking about somebody that's not kind and making fun of them and ha ha ha. Well, the bystander will probably kind of maybe add to it or but never comment about it. But an upstander will probably, hey, I'm gonna block this person. This person's not being very kind. You don't need to tolerate that. You don't have to involve and you don't need to make it continue. So let's think about it. I know that this is something that does happen. So being unkind online is a form of bullying. So we don't want that to happen, okay? So think about what you're doing. Remember, think before you post because everything you post on there can be, can be kind or not kind. Like right here, we just talked about it. If, you can, if they can't see you, but it can hurt their feelings. You know, you think, oh, this, I'm writing something, but it really doesn't, they don't know that it's hurting me because they can't see my reaction. Has that ever happened to y'all? Ms. Kilpatrick? Yes. Ms. No, it, it absolutely has. It happens a lot, actually. And sometimes um, it's sometimes. hard too, mm -hmm. when you're yeah. online, because you might read Thing and it might not be the way that somebody meant it, but you take it in a way that sounds hurtful. So yeah. I agree. And that, you know, cyber bullying, I know one of our friends in the questions asked about that. So yeah. you're absolutely right, Ms. Johnson. There is a form of online bullying called cyber bullying when they say things that are not so kind. So thank you for bringing that up because that is definitely not somebody that you want to be as a cyber bully. 
know. And I know we talked a little bit about it yesterday too, that sometimes the, if you put things in all caps, it kind of looks like you're screaming at them. So th be mindful of how, what you write and how you say it because it does influence what the other person feels like on the other side. And one more. So if you are being bullied or somebody or cyber bullying, you need to let a grown up know and they can help you out. So, you know, we want to either block them or we let someone else know because we don't want it to persist. We want you to have a great experience online, just like we're doing today. You know, we're sharing a lot of things with you and we're hoping that you can get some great tips. So when you're on there gaming and doing some cool things that you keep in mind, all these little tips that we're sharing with you today. So just remember to be kind and remember the golden rule, treat others as you, want you would like to be yes. treated. Yes. You know, and Miss Johnson, if, if, I hope it's okay if I just share kind of something personal, a little personal about it, sure. but um, I know that there are a lot of different apps and things that kids use now and TikTok is very popular and, um, and then there's, you know, there used to be Musical.ly and they're just, but with, with those things, sometimes what you see is someone um, choosing someone else's video to then impersonate or make fun of. And if you are liking that, laughing along with that, then that is not an example of being kind. So just keep those things in mind. Um, when the purpose behind someone doing something like that is to get um, the attention of others and it's um, not a good way to do so. So just remember that whenever you are out there. And That's somebody told me too. one time to always think before I post something, I need to think like, would my grandma be okay reading that? <laughs> would, would my parent be okay reading that? What about my favorite teacher? And oh. if at any point you think in your head, like, oh, I hope that my grandma doesn't read that, or I hope <laughs> that my teacher doesn't read that. If any of that ever crosses your mind, you probably shouldn't write it. Okay. So always yeah. think about that. Think that somebody that you really care about and that you respect is going to be reading everything that you're putting online and think about that because being a bystander sometimes too is really hard. I mean, cyber bullying is, mm -hmm. is very, very, you know, difficult, but if you're just the bystander and you're watching it, somebody behind the screen could really be hurting, like hurts their feelings and it makes mm -hmm. them feel sad. And we don't want that to happen. So I think Ms. Johnson is absolutely Absolutely right. It's so important to be kind in person, but it's also very important to be kind online. Absolutely. And I just want to mention quickly, remember to go back to your little copy and you can add in what is one way you can be an upstander. We're not, so we know that we are excited that you'll be able to double click in here and put that in there. And don't forget, remember the picture in picture. Remember, you can bring that over and you could actually have that on there while you're filling this out. So we want to make sure that you're doing those type things because we're really excited that you guys are on and we want to make sure you have some great online tips. Yes, and I see a lot of people in the chat are asking like, why? Why do people hack and scam? Why do people bully? Okay, why do they do cyber bullying? Okay, and that's mm -hmm. a really great question. They probably didn't have the same talk that we're giving you when they were younger. But sometimes, unfortunately, <laughs> there's a lot of people in this world, lots and lots of different kinds of people and types of people all over the world. And sometimes the people that are contacting you may not be right from around your area. It may be someone from all over the world. So just because they're out there, it doesn't mean that you have to be nervous when you're online. You just have to be smart. So I honestly wish I knew the answer to that. Why do people do that? I wish I could say, here's why. But I really mm -hmm. think that the easy answer is there's all different kinds of people. And what you need to do is just try to remember to do the best job for yourself. Like make sure you are not being a cyber bully or you are not going to scam anybody. But I don't know, Ms. Gilpatrick, Ms. Johnson, <laughs> why? I, it's, it, I it's a question I think we all ask and it's really, you know, goes beyond being online as well, mm -hmm. because it's in, in real life too, why um, it, we all do the things that we do. Yeah. So um, it's different for different people. 
And right. I think that that's a conversation that you have with your parent. And Miss um, Haynes, in this next, when we talk about being brave, she's going to give you some tips of what to do whenever you're faced with those situations. And I think that that might help a little bit um, because it's hard to explain, you know, others' behaviors, but all you can do is control yourself. And right. so you can choose to be kind and we hope that you do. And I saw that Dawson just put in, can you talk to people on video games? So that's a really great question because I know that's something that probably a lot of you have come across as you mm -hmm. love to play video games, they're a lot of fun. So you just need to think about that. You can talk to people, but don't give any of that personal information that Ms. Gilpatrick and Ms. Johnson talked about. If you're talking just about the game and you're having gameplay, of course you can have some online friends, but just make sure that you are not giving them any sort of personal information. You never give them yes. your phone number. You never give them your address. You probably don't even want to give them your full name. You have a screen name that you use and you want to make sure that that keeps your identity private. So we're not saying that you can't talk to people online. We're just saying be smart, be careful and be kind. And right. be sure to have that conversation with your parents yes. too, because yes. there are a lot of ways that you can play games and just connect with other people you know and not be connected with um, strangers. And it's probably best, especially in the elementary age, to yes. just be connecting with people that you know. Absolutely. Great. All tips. right. Okay. And then our, our last part of this is being brave okay so when in doubt you need to talk it out or speak up okay so if you notice something that's happening that's inappropriate you want to speak up you want to tell a trusted adult that you saw something that what you didn't think was right okay it's not tattling it's protecting other people okay stand up when you see something you're not comfortable with and report it, okay? So you don't want anybody to be treated poorly. Think about how would I feel if somebody did that to me, okay? And if it, again, if it's something that makes you feel kind of not really good inside, you probably want to tell an adult. So let's take a look at some tips that you can do when you are doing this, okay? So if you come across something happening that you think is inappropriate, here's a couple of things that you can do. One thing you can do is to get proof, okay? You can do that by taking a screenshot or by taking a picture of what you see online because sometimes people will put stuff out there and then they might rethink it and retract it or delete it. But if you have that photo, you can always show and say, you know, this is what I saw and I don't think it was very kind, okay? If you find something negative, say something. Okay, don't wait until everybody in the class or everybody of your friends has already seen it before you say something. As soon as you see it, say something so that that can get taken down or that the teacher can address that or your parent can address that. And like um, Ms. Gilpatrick just said, talk it out. Anything that makes you feel uncomfortable, it is super, super important to talk to your parents. Okay, and I see that Zane just asked, what are some ways to talk mm -hmm. it out? That could be as simple as saying, you know, hey, to a trusted adult, I saw something, I was online and somebody came on and asked me for my phone number. I didn't give it to them, but why did they do that? Like some of the questions that you guys are asking in the chat, like why, why is this happening? Talk to an adult and let them help you work your way through how to feel and how to react to certain things, okay? And then don't be afraid, okay? It is not uncool to be kind. Okay, it is cool to be kind. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that you are standing up for the people that are important to you or even somebody that maybe you don't know, but you see something that's happening that's not appropriate. So don't be afraid. Be brave. Be strong and tell one of those trusted adults. Okay, and then lastly, if you ever have the opportunity to report and block that inappropriate content. So if you have like, um, you know, a block, if you're doing something on social media and there's a block, I would absolutely block that person. And if it's content that you don't like, you can immediately X out or sometimes you can even hit block. I know like on our email, sometimes if something comes through that looks like it's not good, it's either um, some sort of a scam or something, there's a little button that we click that says report. Okay, and you just click that right away. And what that does is it alerts the people that need to know to make sure that nobody else possibly might click on something that they shouldn't. So it's super important that as soon as you see it, you're going to block it. 
Okay. Miss Hames, I have a, I have, I just had a thought because sometimes um, we might be afraid to talk it out because we don't want to get ourselves in trouble. Yes. So if you're browsing, you're on a website and you see something inappropriate, you may feel like, oh, if I, if I talk to my parent about this, I'm going to be in trouble because I was on this site. But what you need to remember is that it's important that you tell your, talk to your parent because that whatever it is that was inappropriate that came, came up, maybe shouldn't have probably shouldn't have and may have been something wrong with that company's site. And so by sharing with an adult and reporting that information, then you can get that to stop. So don't be afraid that you're going to get yourself in trouble by reporting um, and talking to your parents about it or your right. a trusted adult. And I think that's part of what it means when it says be brave. Okay. Yeah. You know, like sometimes it's, it, you feel like, oh, I don't want to get in trouble, but be brave, stand up for what you know is right. You can do it. We believe in you. And remember, you always want to be the rainbow in somebody else's cloudy sky. So if you see something that is probably hurting someone's feelings, be that rainbow and come back and take care of it so that that doesn't happen. Okay. Love it. All right. Okay, so we love all the questions that you guys are asking. It's just such good discussion. So thank you for doing that. Um, we're now going to give you a chance to show what you know. So this has been just a quick overview of some things to think about to be a good digital citizen. And we're gonna introduce you to a game that you can play to learn even more about it. So the game is called Interland and you're going to travel to these four different lands, Mindful Mountain, which is all about sharing and being smart, Reality River, um, which is about don't fall for fake, and Tower of Treasure, keeping your secrets secure, and Kind Kingdom, which is being choosing to be kind. So in order to join us, what I would suggest is if you aren't already picture in picture, then you can do that, or you can play the game after this session is done, which we're only about nine minutes away. So you could watch what the game looks like, and then you can come back and you can play the game after you watch. So this is a short link that we made for you so that it'll be easy for you to get to it. You'll type in bit.ly slash CFISD enter land. And again, pause type that in, and then you can press play again. So this is a little sneak peek as uh, to the game and what to, you'll, you're going to be experiencing when you play. Okay. So like I mentioned, you're gonna come in and you'll have the chance to go to one of four different lands, and you can start in whatever land that you want. So all of them are there. If you're having an issue with it moving slow, you can go down to the settings and turn off the HD graphics like you see here in this video, and that will help it um, the game work faster. So Mindful Mountain, we're gonna go into Tower of Treasure, give you a little sneak peek as to what this looks like. The Tower of Treasure is a fortress where you can store your valuables. Outrun the hackers or they will steal your messages and identity. <laughs> Start by grabbing your messages and emails containing your private stuff and store them safely in the tower. Great work. 
A hacker should not have access. All right, so now I'm collecting my private information and my phone, and I did it again. The hacker brought my information, so I have to keep going. So once you collect everything, and each of the lands has a different type of game, but it starts off with this kind of thing where you're um, have an activity, and then you'll go to a second level. And at the second level, you'll um, have another activity. Now I want to show you this identity really secured. Nice work, Internaut. You've brought all your messages and identity phone. information inside the tower. But is However, it secure it enough to keep the hackers out? So now. Watch out. A hacker so is stealing your the secrets. To Protect each password. of your guard towers and the gate with the strongest password and secure the Tower of Treasure once and for all. Now, in most of the game, it will be, there will be that voice of reading things to you. But if you need help or assistance with reading, um, there is not an option to hear it be read to you. So just ask uh, a parent or a sibling. Select the strongest password to make your tower more secure. So you'll just select the strongest password gives you good earning the password needs to be at least eight characters general. long and as the, the longer the better also have the hackers mm -hmm. trying to steal things so i went through securing all of the towers again remember those things that make strong passwords and then you put your skills to the test so after you've done those first two activities in each of the lands, then you'll come to this part where you'll have some fill in the bank, fill in the blank questions. In order to build strong passwords, I should start by thinking of a word or a phrase I remember. So there will be a few questions like that, and once you've completed all those questions, then you will have conquered that land and you'll have the opportunity to print a certificate. Here, you'll click, so it shows you how many points you got, and you'll click claim certificate, type in your name, and then it will download to your computer and look like this for that level. And each of those lands has a different certificate. So, as you go through and you complete all of those uh, challenges in Interland, then what we'd like you to do is on your template, you're going to move the charms after you complete each land. So I just completed the Tower of Treasure. I'm internet strong and know how to secure my information. So I'm going to click and drag my lock right there. And as you complete each of these, you'll click and bring those down as you complete each land. And then finally, the Internet Brave, you'll double click in here, type your name. And then you are going to share this with us. So make sure that you've got this part done and this part. And then you're going to click share, get the shareable link and submit to us at this link right here. So what I'm going to do is show you how to do that. So I'm going to click this link so that I have that ready to go. Back to my template, click share, choose get shareable link. It tells me that my link is copied to my clipboard. Just to be sure I can click copy link. And then here I am on our submission um, form. So you're gonna type in your first and last name. Just your first name, Miss Gilpatrick, not your last name. No, no, I'm just kidding. I know. On this <laughs> totally one, like, kidding. <laughs> just totally kidding. <laughs> this is just within the school district. So that's yes. a good thing, though, because it's just within our school district. So it's safe to share that information. Um, but if you are from outside of Cypher and you just want to put your first flat, your last name initial, that is OK. Yes. So that have works. that conversation with your parents. Mm -hmm. Do you currently attend? So you would answer these questions, go through here. I'm going to choose a school. And then which digital learning lab we did online safety. And then right here, copy and paste a link. I have that link already saved on my clipboard. So I'm going to right click or select control V on my keyboard and paste. 
So now that link right there is pasted. And then if you give permission for us to share that on social media, then you can say yes, or you can choose no, then you click submit. Yes, and Ms. Gilpatrick, it is true that when they submit, they put their full name because sometimes like for those people that won our prize from last week, we needed to be able to look up their name in our system to find them. But the only people that see the information that you're putting in the form is the people on our team. Okay, we don't share that with anybody else. And you'll notice that if you follow us on Twitter or on Facebook, when we share things out that you've created, we only put your first name. Okay, so we try very, very hard to make sure we're protecting your identity. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely, we do. Okay, and then the last thing on that template page, Ms. Haynes is gonna share with us real quick what, what you can see on there. So as, as we can tell, because a lot of you are still asking questions in our question template, and unfortunately we're running out of time to answer all of them, but what we wanted to do was make sure that you had some of these resources that you could go through on your own or with your family. Okay, so most of what we've talked about today is from the Google's Be Internet Awesome fam, uh, resources. Okay, so if we click on that link, it's going to take us to some resources that you can do with your family so that you can see that. Then we also shared the Common Sense Media Family Resources resources was just is another company that does a lot with talking about digital citizenship. That first video that we watched was from Common Sense Media. Okay, so um, Ms. Gilpatrick, if you could click on that Google one just for a second, because I want to show them that this is one way that they can access the game as well. So if you missed that URL, you'll see that when you go to that Be Internet Awesome and you scroll down, you'll see that there are a lot of great things. There's a guide that you can download in both English and Spanish, but then right under that, it says Four Kids Interland, and it says Play Now. So if you were to click on that, that would take you to that game that Ms. Gilpatrick was showing you with all the different levels and the different lands that you conquer. There's also coloring books and internet tips. And then there's also a family pledge. So you can make a pledge as a family to stay safe online. Okay, and then if you have a Google account, parents, if you're listening, that family link parents guide is great if your student has a Google account. So definitely take a look at that. But we just wanted to give you a little bit more information so that if you wanted to go back and explore this a little bit more, because like I said, there are a lot of questions in there of what can I do if, you know, take a look at some of those resources with your family or with a trusted adult and see if you can answer some of those questions. I, and I'm pretty sure on the Common Sense Media one that they talk specifically about certain games and websites that are out there. I saw some things about Roblox, for yes. example, and somebody yes. had a question about that. So um, definitely check those things out and they can give you some tips on how to handle those situations. Awesome. Ms. Johnson. Beautiful. Well, thank you everyone for joining us again for this eight weeks we've been doing this, but we do have another one next week and it's gonna be on branding yourself using digital portfolios. We know that you have done so many cool things these last uh, eight weeks, and we would like to stitch them all together so that you can showcase what you've been doing because y'all have been doing some awesome stuff. Just like Ms. Ames and Ms. Kilpatrick was saying, we had so many submissions from that graphic artist that we are so excited. So some of you will be expecting a surprise. So thank you guys again for joining us. We hope you stay safe and have a great rest of the day. Yes, stay safe while you're online. <laughs> yes, absolutely.